Well, good day. Today we're going to be focusing on basic parametric drawing. This happens to be the AutoCAD 2022 new interface. And we're going to go ahead and begin a brand new drawing. And with that, we're going to do some sketching and uh, let me close the external reference window. Um, we're going to do some sketching and a few other uh, setup items here just to get us prepped. Uh, I don't have a hard and fast drawing uh, to preview with, but we're going to talk about the different features within parametric design that's built within the AutoCAD operating environment. So first off, we're going to choose the Home tab and we're going to draw some lines. And again, I'm not going to worry about the size of the object just yet because the whole idea behind parametrics is that we're able to control the size based on dimensions. And so unlike standard AutoCAD, the object that we're creating just has to have a shape. And then we're going to utilize the parametric tools to accurately position all the objects and size them within our drawing environment. The other interesting aspect behind parametrics is that we can link objects together. So we can have a line have a relationship to another line or a circle within the drawing. And so items can be corresponding uh, in their development. And so theoretically, the drawing that we have on the screen could be driven by a single dimension. We just type in one dimension and it totally updates all the other features and lines within the drawing. So across the top we have a parametric tab. Uh, if you do not have the parametric tab you may want to right mouse click in the ribbon area and you can show tabs or show panels in the show tab and you can make sure that the parametric tab is turned on. Um, and so sometimes some of the tabs are not visible and you can just by clicking them add them like I just added the visual ribbon tab uh, for us to work with. So parametric is that tab. So once we have a basic shape created we're going to start to add parametric dimensions and the whole idea behind the parametric dimensions is that they drive the shape of the object. So the dimension links to the entity and that linkage allows you to uh, on the fly type in the values and work with it. But before we get to that part, part of the parametric environment is also working with geom geometry based standards. And so things like that you would be familiar with right off the, the bat, perpendicular, you know, are two, uh, two lines perpendicular to each other? Is something tangent? Uh, is it horizontal? Is it vertical? Is it concentric, which means is a circle inside a circle, or a circle is based on the center of an arc? Uh, do two different line areas, are they collinear? And so there's different setups and different capabilities. And so in essence, I'm gonna actually go back to the home, and we're gonna draw in another quick little feature here, and trim it out. So I'm gonna draw in a little slot here on the top, and we'll trim this out. As we go, as we said, we don't have a, a specific drawing we're trying to create to, but this is a feature that I think we want to work with. And along with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all of our entities here. And I'm going to grab this and move this up and connect the lines. So I just gripped it and adjusted the, the object so these are no longer on the same level. And again, the whole idea is I want to show you some of these cool features that are built within the parametric tools. We have the ability to do symmetry and equal distance or equal values. So if one diameter of a circle can be equal to another diameter of the circle, so forth and so on. So that works really well. The center column here is allow, allowing you to show and hide the constraints that appear. Okay, so as we apply these geometry constraints, we can see them uh, or hide them. Then comes the parametric dimension tools, and we can also show and hide the dimensions. We can also delete any of the constraints that we apply. So 
Uh, again, we can control what's happening. The parameters menu or the parameters manager basically brings up a, a little spreadsheet kind of scenario. And as we add our dimensions and other components, you're going to see them show up as D0, D1, D2, D3 for different dimensions, what the expression is that we're using, and so forth. So we'll pop that back up once we get rolling. So first things first, a couple of things that I want to talk about. The coincident constraint is one that's dramatically important. Let's say, for example, we have two entities that don't touch each other. Okay, Sure, I could use the extend command and connect it, but the coincident constraint guarantees that the entity, and you can see what's happening, is notice that I get the circle with the little red X, and it's saying, all right, these two points have to touch. And so those two points now touch, but it also changed the, the height of this. So in essence, let me go ahead and grip this, and grip this line, and grab this corner, and I want to bring that up and connect them. So in essence, these two points are now connected. You can see the blue dot there. That means that they're coincident, that they're attached to each other. And I can do that for every one of these corners as we go along. The other one that you use quite a bit is perpendicular, parallel, and equal. Horizontal and vertical are also widely used as part of this process. So you can see I purposely drew a line that is not straight. So I can use the perpendicular or the horizontal to set that line to be straight. So if I use perpendicular, it's going to create a 90 degree angle between the two entities. And you can see that it displays the icon of the perpendicular constraint. Once again, since these two points were not connected, it did not automatically shorten the size of the object. I can pick, and notice that there is a midpoint, endpoint, and endpoint. So I said I'm going to connect the two endpoints. And I can go ahead and repeat and connect these two endpoints and go around and connect all the other endpoints as we continue to go around. Now the Auto Constraint button allows us to automatically constrain the geometry. So I'm going to window around it, right mouse click, and choose Enter. And you can see that it put a lot of parallel constraints in um, all the way around the object. But what it didn't do is it didn't connect the two dots. Now if these lines were previously connected, we would get a coincident constraint in that location using the auto. So I'm going to go ahead and make these coincident here and here. And you can see that it shortened the shape. So that auto constraint does exactly what it's asked to do. You window around the object, you put in, and it automatically applies all the geometric constraints to the corners. It's probably a great first step to do. Now we can go ahead and work on some other constraints. The, co the collinear constraint allows us to have a horizontal line or a vertical line connected at the same level. So if this was actually a slot and that slot needed to be um, equal levels, we can, and this one says it's going to be horizontal, I'm going to go ahead and pick this one first and I'll select the second object. And you can see what happens is that they're now on the same plane because they're now collinear. And if I need to delete any of these, I can right mouse click on that constraint and choose delete. Okay, so that's easy enough to manage. Can you over constrain? Absolutely. I can put too many of these constraints in place and it will tell me when it doesn't work. Now, it's not necessarily making a huge error. What it's saying is that you really don't need that constraint. Or, if you really do need that constraint, you need to delete other constraints to make it flexible. For example, if I select this line and grip it, and I pick the middle to be able to move it, as I move it, look what happens. It changes the angle, but the height of the line stays the same. 
So it's still going to remain parallel to the constraint that it that is highlighting. Notice that the two highlight parallel constraints. However, the flexibility is in the angle and the length of this line. So be aware of that, that if you change the shape, and there is times that you might have to change the shape as we apply these constraints. So let's go ahead and, and start to look at the constraints themselves. And we're going to develop these constraints overall with a relationship to each other. So the first linear constraint that I'm going to apply is this constraint here. This is going to become dimension zero. Oh, I just picked the wrong one. What it wants to do is pick the endpoints of each of the lines. So it's different than our normal dimensioning because we have to attach it to each of the endpoints of the entity. Now this particular line is coming up as 7.7865. Well, realistically, I only wanted it to be six inches tall. So if I select it and I change this number to 6.00, it should automatically update the height of the object to a total of six inches. And it did. Notice that the size and the shape of the object has changed based on typing a number in the dimension. I didn't have to draw the line accurately. The dimension has to be accurate. Now this six inches, I want, and notice that it's D, D1, excuse me, I said D0 before, but it is D1. I'm going to add a new dimension, and I'm going to dimension this vertical line here, so endpoint to endpoint. So it's a little bit more work doing the dimensions. Okay, it's a little bit more work because you have to pick the endpoints. And now I'm going to place this dimension. Now this dimension, D2, I would like to be equal to D1 divided by 3. So it's going to take whatever the value of D1 is, divide it by 3, and that's going to be the resultant dimension here. So you can build an equation as part of the par parametric environment. So this obviously is 2 inches tall. This is 6 inches tall. This is one-third the height of this. But you can see how this now becomes a connected operating environment. So let's say for example, and all the objects are still movable, we can still move all these objects around and as long as it doesn't have dimensions to it, they're all still flexible. We can add a dimension from the center of the circle to the end, or we can dimension the circle. There is a diameter dimension, and so we can pick the diameter of the object, and this is 2.9 um, inches. We, I really don't want that large, so let's go ahead and put 1.75 as our dimension. So this is diameter 1, 1.75, and I could say I want to make equal this circle equal and that circle equal. So those are the two automatically that they pop up. So now I only have to dimension one circle. This one will automatically update and change. Same with the dimension. I can dimension between each of the circles and keep them exactly 8 inches apart or 7 inches apart. And now I can dimension between the circle and the end and provide a, di a distance of 2.5 inches. So now it's 2.5 plus 7 and again I could also drive that all the way back from number one. So the whole idea is that I can control all these values with the dimension. So let's say I wanted to make D5 and D4 equal. So I can just say D5 equals D4. Okay, so now Whatever this value is, the height is going to be remaining the same. And unfortunately, collinear only works on horizontal lines. Um, we could dimension, and here's what I would typically do, is I would do a linear dimension between the center of this circle and the center of this circle. 
and you can see that I've got a little bit of a gap, a 0.15 gap, and I would just make that zero. So now this circle and this circle always stay vertically aligned. And so we go around and we can continue to dimension the objects. And so the, the large line here on the bottom, I'll pick the two ends, comes down. We're going to make this um, D1 times 3. So it's D1 asterisk 3. And so... Again, relationship back to the original size object. So the whole exterior dimension structure is going to be based on D1. So D1 times 0.75, and I'll make this line and this line equal. So we'll use the equal tool, equal to equal, boom, that's done. And now the depth, endpoint to endpoint, D1 divided by 3. And you've got to be careful that you type in the right value, because if you type in D12, okay, and if it's not there, it will fail. So now this height is fine. We still have to do the width. So the distance from here to here. And we'll also make this equal to D8. So D10 is equal to D8. And so as you build these, you'll notice that now in the parameters, I have the constraints D1, D2, D3, D4, tells me the values. Um, and I can list them, and it gives me the, the resultant values. But if there's an equation, D1 times 0.75, I can highlight it and edit it and work from there. And that's the advantage of seeing all the specific dimensions in one location. I can see whether it's a diameter dimension, a linear dimension. They have angles. They have, you can convert an existing dimension to a, a parametric dimension. And they have radius dimensions. The aligned is perfect if you wanted to dimension a diagonal line uh, to get the true length distance of that diagonal line. But in reality, we have the dimension to here, to the point here and we have the dimension to the point here because um, I made this line equal to this line so in essence we have the height we have the length and so this line if I tried to add a dimension to it would tell me that it's going to be over constrained and so that is how you build a parametric drawing now let's say for example I change this from 6 to 8 what happens well, any of the dimensions that are tied back to dimension number one update automatically. So the overall outside shape updates automatically. The circles do not because they were not tied back to the original D1 dimension. And so that gives us the flexibility to have a really cool way to be able to uh, work and edit and develop drawings. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.